It's the Rock Man back with a six minute squat video. I got a couple things to rant about, and I'm gonna use this full workout to do it. I haven't uploaded a full workout in a while, but I have been uploading top sets, and if you read descriptions, you'll know how many sets I did before that. I haven't been uploading the entire thing because it's just kind of boring for a lot of people, and I uh, can't be bothered with voiceovers a lot of time. I feel like I need to put a little bit of effort into it. I would like to have more fun with editing these videos, but it just seems like I'm always on to the next thing. Uh, by the time I get the video thrown together, and I wanted to enjoy the process, I did uh, one for big trips because I saw him make a couple comments. Same fucking thing he said to me for over a year since he blocked me from his channel. I don't follow this motherfucker anymore. I just wanted to see, does he follow me? And I got my answer. No, no, he doesn't follow me. He didn't comment shit on the video. I don't have anybody blocked on my channel, so I know he didn't say shit. I knew about the challenge because I watched Garage Workouts videos, and he made a response video to it. I was hoping Big Trips would stick with it, but what can you expect? He challenged Tim to a bench press competition, and when this dude brings it, his adaptation to training stimulus on the bench press is so varied. He can do high volume, he can do high intensity, he can do heavy weights, he can do heavy weights at high volumes, he can handicap himself for the fucking workouts and still come out on top. He's got the eye of the tiger, and if you fuck with the tiger, you'll get the teeth. Did Big Trips honestly think that he could hang with this dude using that stale vanilla bro bullshit? Come on, man. The dude is incapable of objectively analyzing his own training strategy. It's a waste of my time to talk about him. Darkness Trophies, on the other hand, is not a waste of my time or I wouldn't be over in his comment section so much. He switched to a different type of programming for his bench press and I wish that he would get on board with something that has a broader scope for all of his lifts. Because on the deadlift and the squat, we see the dude is trapped in one of the classic beginner mistakes. He's reached a point with linear where it takes him too long to recover between those maximum effort type of workouts. And it's very frustrating to sit here and try and explain variation to someone who is so resistant to the idea of it. It's a powerlifting rule and powerlifting's bullshit, or this grip is bullshit, or that stance is cheating. You have to expand your view of training beyond these very small windows of the individual workout that Linear uses to encompass something that I've talked about pretty exhaustively, which is the accumulation of fatigue and dissipation of that fatigue in waves. Block periodization. Really, at this point, anything that incorporates some sort of structured variation is only going to have a positive outcome. But I'm not going to get trapped in the quagmire that is talking about programming, and I'm going to move along and talk about breathing and bracing. I've seen Dean mention this in multiple comments, and he is obviously putting a heavy emphasis on it in his own training. Control of the breath is something that we see across the board in almost every sport increasing athletic performance significantly. I had been working with it on the bench press, but on the squat I had been neglecting an emphasis on it even during my beltless training. I've been putting more emphasis on it and immediately seeing technical payoffs. This entire channel exists to form check myself. You'll watch my left knee right here. That little bit of knee valgus is the only significant technical breakdown I experienced in the entire workout. I felt it two reps before it happened. I was trying to cue more through my hip, but I just had to move my toe that fraction of an inch. And that's why practicing your walkout, your technical efficiency, all of these different factors are so important. Breathing and bracing is huge. Control of the diaphragm and being able to maximize your intra-abdominal pressure without the fucking belt on is going to give you less pain in your lower back because you're not hyperextending your lower back. You're going to have less injuries and tears in your intercostal muscles, your abdominal muscles. You're going to have greater stability. You're going to move greater weight. And if you get 20 pounds out of the belt and you suck at beltless training and you become better at the beltless training, you're going to throw the belt on and find that you can now do 40 pounds in addition to all these other positive outcomes. The bracing brings me to my last gripe of the day, which is guys who have excessive amount of head up on deadlift and squat. I know that this is a cue that coaches intentionally give to guys, but I don't know why because 
Well, shit, I'm kind of running out of time to talk about links in a chain and vertebra and all this other crap, but just be aware that it is totally breaking down your kinetic chain, that when you're talking about lifting heavy weights and being a tank, that in order to tank physical damage, well, you want to be in a strong position, right? And you'll never take a hit in football or absorb a blow in boxing with your fucking chin up. And there's a reason for that. Well, I mean, if you do, you're going to have a very short career. So anybody who has to chin up, chin up to move the weight on a deadlift or a squat, they're having a significant kinetic chain breakdown that is forcing them to have this hyperextension in their neck. And it's not good for your shit, man. Uh, it's definitely not good for your efficiency. But I'm out of time, so I hope you guys are training strong until part three. And as always, thanks for watching.